Hello, my loves. Last time I did one of these fun TMI Q&A videos, I was at the Dutch Brothers drive-thru. So I figured why not keep tradition, except I don't know, I got over Dutch Brothers. So we're at the Starbucks drive-thru. I typically don't care for Starbucks all that much, but we're doing it. So how much do you love my nerd grandma glasses? I'm obsessed with these. Okay, what are we gonna get? I've been up since 5.30 this morning. I had one cup of coffee early this morning. So it is definitely overdue. All the fall feels. I want something like that. I was gonna start the Q&A now, but there's only one car in front of me. So today we're doing postpartum Q&A, all the juicy questions that you wanna know about postpartum fourth trimester. First I have to order my Starbucks. <laughs> Hey, can you recommend anything kind of like fall flavored that's sugar-free? So, uh, we have sugar-free vanilla. Okay. It's only like sugar-free like syrup. Okay. Or sugar-free anything we have. No, no, I'm that's sorry. A, no, no worries. I'm going to totally flip it. Can I do a brown sugar oat milk shake and espresso? Yeah, what size do you want? Can you do venti? Venti. Alrighty, it's going to be 6.45. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Hi, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, can I have a straw? Oh, you are? That's okay. All right, have a good day. Thanks. I found my way from Starbucks, as you saw, to the Walmart parking lot. Today's video is sponsored by Carrer or Carrer. I'm not sure how you say it. C. A-R-E-R -E -R is how you spell it though. This is their S12 brand new breast pump with nine settings. So here is the pump itself. There are minimal parts. It's so easy to take apart, to clean, to put together. There's a duckbill pump, just like normal. There is that little cover for where you express your milk. And then you just clip that right into the little bowl. Make sure you snap it in real tight. There is the little hole where you uh, get the milk out, pour the milk out when you're done. You have to put that top on and make sure that it's snapped into place really well so you don't lose your milk after you're done pumping. Then the little headpiece, you just line that up. You put the motor right on there. Make sure it's clicked in really tight. And there are different settings. So it's one through nine. The higher in the number, the more the suction. And then there are two different modes. You have the letdown mode, massage mode. You also have the express mode that simulates the baby sucking. You put it right on your breast. You line up your nipple with the hole. You put it inside of your bra. And you can see I already have some on. They do the job hands-free. It makes you want to dance because you're not plugged into a wall or stuck sitting at a table. I just want to add that it is so easy to use. It is whisper quiet. I'm actually using the pump right now as I record this voiceover and you probably cannot hear it at all. What's also great about this pump is that it remembers the last setting you use. So the next time you go to use it, it'll start where you were last time. So you don't have to reprogram it every single time you use it, which as a pumping mom, you know, saves you so much time. You could do anything like vacuum. Back to the video. So the first question is, how was labor and delivery? Were you nervous? Oh, I was so nervous my whole entire pregnancy. My biggest fear my whole entire life since I found out that babies weren't born by being dropped off by a stork on your front porch was labor and delivery. Every single minute of my pregnancy up until I found out I was in labor, which I found out at the doctor's office, I had no idea. I didn't feel anything. I will post the video up there that Adam and I did together with our whole entire easy birth story. For some reason, something took over me that day. Adam is usually the calm one. He calms me down, kind of keeps me even, but he was kind of running around like a nervous wreck. And I was just like, meh. I think I was in denial. The only time I got really nervous was when they told me it was time to push. Cause I guess I was like, oh my God, this is happening. And then when they handed me the baby, it was like a different kind of nervous. But other than that, nope. I don't know why, but nothing day of, I guess I do know why, like something just kind of takes over your animal primal instinct, I think takes over and something in your brain just flips and it's don't think just do. Did you poop on the table? You were so scared about it. I love that you remembered that 100% 
well, like I guess 99.9% .9 am certain that I did. Nobody told me I did. So when it was time to push, the doctor and the nurse taught me how they're like, let's do one practice push. And I remember right as I was getting my epidural, I was like, ooh, I feel like I have to go to the bathroom, but not pressure where you feel like you have to push the baby out. That didn't happen for a little while. My stomach was rumbling. I ate bok choy and tofu for lunch, baby bok choy, because that's what I had in the fridge. I mean, if you knew you were going to go into labor that day, like if you're getting induced advice from experience, don't eat baby bok choy. And, and my stomach was just kind of like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Got my epidural. I like, didn't think twice about it. First push, I watched the doctor. Now she says to me, wow, she's like, you're a natural. You're a really good pr pusher. Watch her stick her hand out. The nurse hand her what looked like, okay, this is so disgusting and I don't want to ruin it for you, but you know when you go to the Chinese restaurant and you get those chicken on a stick and they come in that paper on the outside, aluminum on the inside, kind of like a lunch bag, long and thin. That's what it looked like and she handed her that bag and then the doctor did something real quick and handed it right back to her. I can only assume that's what they were doing was cleaning me up. I didn't feel any wiping or anything like that, but I had a serious epidural where I felt nothing. I personally think I did. I will not ask Adam to confirm because I don't want to put him in a bad position. I told him he had to lie to me about that and take it to his grave. I think I did. Were you shy or nervous about giving birth? I'm assuming she means while giving birth. What's funny is I thought I would be. I'm such a modest, shy person, especially when it comes to my body. To be honest with you, no. Again, something primal takes over your body and you're not thinking about that. On my last push, the doctor's like, we're gonna have a baby. A whole bunch of people, probably like 10 people flooded into the room and I could care less. My legs are spread open in stirrups. Nothing phased me. All you can focus on is getting that baby out. That's it. I thought I would be. There there is no way you're not going to be able to focus on the moment and not give a flying rats anything about anybody in there or what they see could care less this is kind of like a whole bunch of questions in one how long did you bleed for what was your healing like and how was your first poop so i bled for four weeks to the day my recovery process was easy i was told i was going to get tons of clots i didn't my midwife when she visited me in the hospital told me just to look out for about two weeks after you give birth she told me i would pass an enormous clot i'm assuming that's where the placenta leaves an open wound and that's part of the reason why you can't have sex or insert anything for six weeks like a tampon anything like that because you still have scab in your uterus my assumption i don't know whether this is true or not i was just assuming was that when that scab falls off you know, like a scab falling off on the outside of your body is when the clot is passed. I never noticed that. I don't know if it passed while maybe I was like going to the bathroom and I didn't, didn't see it. I don't know if my body absorbed it. I'm not sure, but I didn't pass any clots that I noticed. And I bled heavily for maybe three days. I wore the hospital pads for probably a week. I tried to wear the adult diapers and the even the Freedom Mom underwear and I couldn't stand the feeling of it. It was too bulky, but it's just not me. I'm a thong girl. I don't even like boy shorts or anything with a lot of material under my pants. I did have to wear them, of course, for, I think I wore them for about six weeks, four to six weeks. I just went to the thin always pads and I was perfectly fine. Like the overnights, the super absorbent, but very thin pads with wings. That was fine. How was the first poop? I think this was one of the things I was the most nervous about. So I held it. I wish I didn't, I wish I didn't let it scare me, but my sister's best friend had a baby in February and she's like my little sister. So I asked my sister to ask her, I was like, here's a TMI one. And she's like, you know us, we're all about the TMI. I did take stool softeners and the prenatal gummy fibers that I took when I was constipated during pregnancy. And it was not bad at all. It really was mentally more weird. The only thing that I would advise to you if you're going through it is to make sure that you have moist wipes. At first use baby wipes because I didn't have flushable wipes. Adam was like, that's not a good idea, but it was all I had in the house. And then I went out and I bought good wipes. I'll put a picture of them there. I'll put a link to them down below if you want. They're really good. And they're all pH balanced and all that kind of stuff. But yep, first poop, not as bad as you think. How was sex the first time? And what was that like? So we kind of fooled around. This is so weird, but we kind of, this is so TMI. Anybody who is like a mother figure to me, click off of this one go to the next one. The first time we tried to have sex was the day after I was cleared by the doctor. And that was just 
painful, I asked him to stop. It was just, mm -mm. I don't know if it was more mentally painful or physically painful, but it wasn't happening. It lasted five seconds. Also, Christian was in the bedside bassinet next to us, which kind of like a little got in my head, but not only was he next to us, he woke up, not by us. He just woke up because of his schedule and he started to cry. Like this can't happen right now. So the next time was maybe a week later. Baby was dead asleep. It hurt when it initially went in, but I kind of just like had to tell myself, relax. If you relax long enough, you feel comfortable and it feels good. And to be honest with you guys, you are so overtired and not even into that with a baby. It hasn't happened since. Sorry, TMI. How much pain were you in after birth, like down there and after birth contractions? And I'm sure the question's here. So I'll answer it now. Did you tear? I had a very small one degree tear first degree tear whatever that's called internal I had one stitch for me after birth was annoying more than painful because it was like a 15 minute ordeal every time I had to go to the bathroom what hurt the most were the first few times like the first three or four days maybe a week where you had to spray the peri bottle because you had to dilute your pee the acid would really 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 burn that hurt and it started to wear emotionally just because you're like, all right, I'm over this. I'm overtired. Everything hurts. Every time I have to pee, it's a 15 minute process. It doesn't feel good, but really after three days, it gets better after a week, you're good. I liked the Peri bottle from the hospital better over like the Freedom Mom. And I got another one very similar to the Freedom Mom that had the curved neck. I genuinely liked the cheap plastic bottle from the hospital. I just always kept it filled with water. Don't go hot, don't go cold, go lukewarm. I just kept it full on the counter. Every time I ran out, I would refill it and just leave it on the bathroom counter so it would get to room temperature. The tip of the day is start spraying before you start peeing so the water has a chance to hit you and dilute before the acidic urine comes out contractions after birth I mean I felt them because breastfeeding just very bad period cramps when I felt them the most was when I missed a dose of Motrin in the hospital they were giving me Motrin every six hours so I told my sister and she told my other sister who's about to have a baby any day just make sure you stay ahead of it don't have to chase the pain. Once you start having to chase the pain, it's gonna be painful. Like the day we were being released from the hospital, it had been just amount of time that I needed another Motrin. So I was like distracted, getting the baby dressed, getting myself dressed, packing us up. It went a little bit long. The nurse didn't wanna give me my Motrin because I hadn't eaten and she's like, it's not good for your stomach. I felt really crampy that day. This felt like a really bad period cramp. And plus I was overtired. So you know how everything just hurts more? It's totally doable, but I heard with every baby they get worse. I know with my sister-in-law with her third baby and she's a tough cookie, she said, that she was laying on the couch like down and out for the first week with her third baby because of the contractions after birth. Do you pee yourself after birth? I can't lie to you, you do. I remember the day I was getting released from the hospital, I had to pee pretty bad, but I was trying to do too much and I was talking to Adam and pee just started, I literally just started peeing myself. Like I had no bladder control whatsoever. And just for reference, I had a vaginal birth. I did have an epidural, I had a catheter and I pushed for, I think I pushed for like a little under two hours. It was a little under two hours or a little over two hours. I have to ask Adam. I can't remember what time I started. On my last push, my doctor's like, he's got to come out now. You got to get him out. His heart rate's dropping. His cord was wrapped. I pushed as hard as I possibly could. And I just felt my abs from top to bottom straining. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but yes, at my house, again, I was washing dishes. This was maybe like a week into it. I was washing dishes. I had to pee, but I'm like, let me just finish. I've never had a problem with bladder control before. I could hold it for a really long time. Hello, six hour car trips. Taught me really well. Just started peeing myself, not a little bit. Six weeks later, when I was cleared to work out, I tried to jump rope with every jump, a little pee came out. Emotionally, that was hard. I came inside and I'm like, I, I look like I peed myself because I did like a puddle. Like it's not just like a little bit dribbles. It was gushes and he was laughing thinking I was joking and I'm like it's not funny I'm never gonna be able to take a CrossFit class again it has subsided yesterday was three months every once in a while I'll still I can sneeze now I'm okay cough and I'm okay those were two that would get me a lot what would happen a lot as well I was just remembering and still happens every once in a while is I'll pee I'll be done I'll wipe myself I'll stand up pull up my pants and a gush will come out almost like I wasn't done but I didn't know so bizarre something that I need to take my own advice and I'm so bad with it, but Kegels, Kegels, Kegels. I hate Kegels. I think they feel disgusting. I feel like there's a look on your face where people know what you're doing, even though there is absolutely not. How was your first workout since you had the baby? Hard. 
humbling. First workout I did since having the baby, I stopped. Very light, I just wanted to move my body. I was doing body weight squats and I felt like my abs were just like ripped. I stopped, I didn't wanna do any more. I went home, I had a little bit of spotting. My first real workout, I couldn't even get down for one burpee in a push-up position without falling. First of all, your core is weak because you can't really work it that well. The nine months that you're pregnant because your abs are just separated and they're just not there. You can't work them. But also now they're stretched out. They're weak. They're bruised. You use them to push out the baby. They're destroyed. It was humbling. I wanted to cry. I wanted to get in my head. I did what I could. I'm an athlete. So I have to say in my head, it was definitely torture and it was humbling. And I was like, I'm broken. It's never going to come back. And I'm still at the point where I'm a lot slower. My wind isn't that my lungs, my wind, my cardio, however you want to say it, conditioning isn't where it was, but I know now I feel like I'm at the point where I can get it back. Doesn't mean my body's going to look the same and that's okay, but I can get my wind back. I just have to work for it now. Did you get baby blues, postpartum depression, or postpartum anxiety? I don't necessarily think I got like diagnosable postpartum depression whatsoever. I was great. I felt great. I mean, I prayed for a baby. I wanted a baby. I never thought I'd have a baby. He is a miracle. That doesn't mean that somebody who's going to experience postpartum depression and they have a situation similarly won't get it. Everybody's very different. And I honestly thought that I was, I'm going to start driving while I talk about this one. I honestly thought I was going to get postpartum depression because of my horrific PMS because I've struggled with depression here and there in the past. But I think my depression wasn't necessarily like clinical depression. I think it was if this is even a thing or if I'm making it up, like situational depression. My husband was a lifer in prison. I didn't know if he'd ever come home or I'd get the opportunity to lay next to him in bed, let alone have his baby. So that was a situation that made me depressed. Situational depression. Is that a thing or did I make it up? I have no idea, but I don't think I necessarily like struggle with depression, if that makes sense. So uh, maybe not. Maybe if you get depressed over situations you do. I don't know. I was okay with that. I did have a few breakdowns. Everything for the first six weeks made me tear up. Everything, good stuff, bad stuff. Everything made me want to cry. I had one major scary meltdown. I was having a lot of issues breastfeeding and all I wanted to do was talk to my mom. She lived to be a grandmother. So I wanted her to meet the baby. I wanted to see her hold the baby. I wanted to call her and be like, help me. I don't understand this breastfeeding thing. You breastfed six kids for a year each. I need you. And I didn't have her literally sobbing, like <laughs> sobbing like a child. And you know, when you're in an emotional fit, you know, you're being irrational, but it makes you cry more. That was it the whole way. That was the worst of it. And then everything else was just like, you know, random tears. And I think that probably lasted two and a half months. Weird for me postpartum has been, I kind of feel like I lost my voice. If something upsets me, I internalize versus I used to be like, man, like get snippy, but now I just don't say anything. I don't know why. I don't know if that's part of postpartum depression. I do have very bad anxiety as far as like, I see things that could potentially happen. Like Adam getting into a car accident on his way to work. I was driving to Hoover Dam to show my dad and there was a burst of wind that like kind of shook the car and I'm like, oh my God, we're going off the road. Like I could see that. Every five minutes I would check if the baby was breathing. That lasted till about like two months. And then after that, I feel a little bit better. Like I'm not waking up every second. I do jump up if he makes noise, but I'm not checking to make sure he's breathing every 10 seconds. Maybe I'm trying to convince myself that I didn't have it and those are it. But if I had it, have it, it's minor. I am obsessed with this child. I love him. I've never had this postpartum depression situation where I'm like, I'm, I don't want to have him. I want him gone. I, you know, anything like that, anything against myself. I love being his mom. I love doing mom things. Doesn't mean it's easy, but I'm not depressed or upset about any of it. I just babble. That was a lot. Confessions of a first time mom. Maybe that's what I should name this. I'm going to do like one more question and then I'm going to bring the groceries in and we'll finish this inside. Did I get, get an epidural? And what was that like? I did get an epidural. I got it when I was seven centimeters. They walked me into from the, I guess you would call it like a triage room where they were in labor and delivery, but they were monitoring me to see if my labor would progress on its own. Cause I went in at four centimeters. I just had to progress far enough for them to admit me to make sure the labor was progressing and didn't stop. I told them when I was seven, I didn't know, but I had like a really bad contraction and they checked me and they're like, Oh yep. You're getting admitted. They got me a room fast. 
and my doctor ordered the epidural right away. I don't know, everything that night felt really, really quick. Although now looking back, I got to the hospital at 5.30 and he wasn't bored until 12.44 a.m. It all feels like a quick blur. So I don't really know how much time had passed. I was probably eight centimeters when I got it. My doctor was a gem and she made the anesthesiologist do it like as soon as possible because I told her. She followed my wishes, which was great. She asked me at four centimeters, do you want an epidural? I said, as soon as you can give it to me and thank God it all went as planned. Do I regret it? Not in the least. Let me tell you how much they charged. My insurance covered a lot of this, but the anesthesiologist charged $5,000 for the five minutes he was in my room, $1,000 a minute. And I did not pay near $1,000. My insurance paid almost all of it. I told my sister, I'm like, it is going to be the most expensive but most worth it five minutes of your life. And the epidural when he put it in, I can't say it was pain. Yeah, it was a little painful. More like somebody is moving around inside of your spine in an area where you never felt before. It's very, very, very uncomfortable to the point where I tensed up and my nurse was like, drop your shoulders, breathe in, breathe out. You've got this. And I was like, you should double as a yoga instructor because you're amazing. Okay. Placenta delivery. How was it? Last one before we go inside. I didn't feel a thing. I didn't even know what happened. I was holding the baby. The doctor is talking to me and she's like, all right, you had one tear, one stitch, you have one degree tear, first degree, whatever it's called, one stitch, talking me through stuff. So maybe she said something about the placenta. I don't know. I didn't feel any of that, but I was num num. Okay, let me just go take the groceries and the baby inside and then we will continue because this is fun. Only a few more questions. Back in the house, baby is still asleep. He's in his swing. I hope you can't hear it swinging. So the next question is, what was your first feeling when they handed you the baby? I really went into detail on the birth story vlog that I did with Adam where we both shared our experience. So I will post it in the cards up there. You guys can watch it. But basically I was looking around the room for somebody to take him because I was like, I don't want it. It's too much responsibility. Uh, this is too much for me. I was just overwhelmed. Is he sleeping or are you up all night? It's hit or miss with him. I have a whole video that I'm in the process of making where I'm taking you through every wake up a full night with a breastfed newborn. I say breastfed because if I give him a bottle of formula right before bed then, or formula throughout the day, he'll sleep a lot longer throughout the night. I think it fills his belly a little more, but if he goes to sleep around eight, 8.30, he'll wake up around between 12.30 and one or two. And then if I keep him up or I wake him up again, if he goes to sleep at 8.30, around 10.30, he'll give me till about three or four. And then either way, he's up again at six. And then sometimes after six, it's like six, seven, eight. Sometimes he'll give me like six, seven, nine. Yesterday it was 9.30. So it just depends. He is feeding on demand. I don't wake him unless he sleeps for too many hours during the day and I want him to sleep more at night, obviously. In the beginning, Adam was helping me with bottles when I was exclusively pumping and giving him formula because I didn't make enough milk and he wasn't latching because he was tongue tied. Maybe that was for the first four weeks. Ever since, I will only get up with him at night because I need to drain my breasts and I hate pumping at night. So I make sure I get up with him every single time he wakes up at night and I feed him on both sides, 15 minutes at least each side. So I'm draining as much as I can throughout the night. There were a few times like I, he would give me like four nights in a row where he would sleep all night long and we're like, ah, oh, and then he would go back to his waking up. But I purposely don't give him formula at night if I can help it to make sure he wakes up to make sure that I am draining my breasts, supply and demand. You guys know how it is. Are you nursing or formula? I just answered that. Do you cover up when nursing? Really good question. Somebody on here commented, I made a video breastfeeding and I covered myself and they were like, I don't think that, I think you should normalize not covering yourself. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't wanna like put my boobs out on the internet. Somebody else was like, well then don't nurse while you're making a YouTube video, problem solved. Thanks Karen, got it. Unless I'm in the house, I don't really nurse very often in public. Once or twice I did it. One time I wanted to nurse so bad because he was so upset in the middle of a restaurant. I didn't have a bottle with me. I had nothing with me. I couldn't because I had a shorter v-neck. And I said to Adam, I'm like, he just ate, he'll be fine. 
by the time we got a reservation, got sat, got our food, ate, it had been over three hours and he was starving, poor baby. So I couldn't feed him and I wanted to and I probably wouldn't have cared if I covered up or not. Because here's the thing, when you lift your shirt and you hold the baby, but there's enough fabric there. Okay, last question. Oh, it's a good one. What do you wish you knew about labor and delivery before you did it? I wish that I knew that it wasn't nearly as bad as most of us think. I watched every and any YouTube video that I could possibly find or get my hands on about labor and delivery. Adam's like, please stop. And I'm like, no, like I have no control. So I want to be prepared for any and every eventuality. Everybody's story is so different. Everybody has a different pain tolerance. I did not feel my labor. I didn't know I was in labor. I'm very, very, very blessed to have experienced that, but I made my pregnancy sort of miserable. I mean, not really, but I was just so, so, so anxious. And I think the problem is a lot of people like to share horror stories. It's like a badge of honor. And I get it now being in like the mom's club that people would ask me like, do you have any children? And I always felt left out or I would always like judge people. Like she's got a pile of laundry not put away. What is wrong with her? Now I'm like, girl, you brushed your teeth and it's before noon, you're my hero. There's a lot of judgment when you don't have a child and when you're, when you finally do, and it's kind of like you're inducted into the society of people that just know, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you know, you know, and if you don't know, you have no clue. So I think people think that that's their badge of honor, that's their stripes, but not everybody's story is like that. And mine was easy. So I wish I just didn't listen and I just let my body do its thing. And the other thing is maybe this isn't about labor and delivery, but I wish I cared less about that because everybody's story is so different. Like I'm glad I knew kind of things here and there on what to expect in a sense, but at the same time, I wish, and if I could pass anything along to anybody who's watching this, who is expecting a baby, wants to get pregnant, that type of thing, I wish I spent my time researching breastfeeding. I thought it was going to be natural. I thought it was going to be easy. I thought it's just, it's just the next step. You just put your baby on and he latches and it's good and he eats and ah, uh, not even close. And everybody I speak to has the exact same response. And I told my sister and thank God she listened. I was like, if I could give you any advice, I'm passing this along to you as my sister and I'm passing along to you as my sister spend your time researching breastfeeding any kind of issues how to do it how to get more milk how to increase your supply what to eat what not to eat i can make all the videos spend your time doing that versus how am i going to decorate my nursery do it have fun with it and labor and delivery vlogs watch them to an extent but also spend time doing that i wish that's my only regret this video is I've done it in chunks, so I don't even know how long it is. It is long winded, it is babbly, but you guys know me. I am a big sister to the world, now I am a mommy. And I just wanna share everything that I can pass along with you, to you, so you don't have to experience the pain or the hardships or anything. Did it in my former prison wife life, doing it in my new mommy life. No, I'm babbling, Starbucks does it to me. If you are not already subscribed, do me a favor and do that. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts, what you want, what you want to hear, what you liked, what you didn't like, agreed with, any tips you have for me as a new mom. If you're in the club already, a veteran, I appreciate anything you guys tell me or share. I love the ones that are like, listen, girl, this isn't judgment. Just want to let you know you're doing that wrong. For other videos, look back on my channel. I just don't want to end it because I'm having so much fun talking and babbling, but I've got to run. Adam's at the airport. I have to go pick him up and we're going out to dinner. So I will be back with whatever you guys want to see. I will see you in the next one. Mwah.